do dragons have genders? If you followed my work or my course, you've probably heard me say, you did, every dragon is different. And that certainly applies to um, genders as well. That being said, today I'm gonna talk about just the tendencies I've noticed with dragon gender. So first off, spirit guides as dragons. Um, these are the types that we talk about the most in my course, you know, in my YouTube. And probably this is the type that you're gonna be most familiar with because these are the types that, you know, attach themselves to humans and are most open to working with humans. And in my experience, connecting with hundreds of different, you know, dragon guides from clients, um, I can say that spirit guide dragons tend to have less of an attachment to gender. I've met many guides that are just totally like gender fluid. They'll like switch in and out. Um, some that they just prefer to be referred to as they and to not uh, associate with either polarity. And sometimes too also though, like they will have a specific energy that they're really aligned with and they're like, yes, no, I'm definitely a feminine energy. I'm definitely a masculine energy. So again, it, every situation is really different, but the tendency I've noticed is that spirit guide dragons, because of the nature of their existence, they're just a little less attached to specifics. Now, physical dragons, dragons that we don't really interact with at all because they reside in different dimensions, different planets, these dragons are going to have a lot more attachment to a specific gender because that is more their identity. Just like us, you know, we're very invested in our human avatars right now and whatever gender we chose and that's how it is for them as well. And gender might actually play a very important role in their society as well, which I'll get to shortly. Another interesting thing of note is if you do any sort of draconic witchcraft, draconic magic, you work with the four main elemental dragon deities, which are um, Fafnir, the fire dragon, Ceres, the air dragon, Nalian, the water dragon, and Grail, the earth dragon. And these dragons are totally gender fluid. Like they will just go in and out, in and out. So if you want to kind of experience maybe what that energy feels like, feel free to call on any of them. Um, they are more than happy to assist. So how do you tell what gender your guide prefers? Honestly, just like our modern society now asking, you know, what are your pronouns and all that? The same applies to the dragons. You just ask them, ask them directly. What would they prefer to be known as? What, what are their pronouns? <laughs> and also before, if you're not like in open dialogue quite yet with your dragon, that sometimes can take time you can start to get a feel for it just in how their energy feels. Like, does it feel more stereotypically masculine or stereotypically feminine? Um, usually that's a very good indicator. When I connect with people's dragon guides for the Meet Your Dragon Guide service, where I like go in, I draw a sketch of their dragons. Um, usually before I even really start communicating, talking to the dragon, I start to get a feel for the energy. I'm just like, yeah, yeah, this is definitely a male dragon I'm connecting with. This is definitely a female dragon. And usually when I draw the dragon, if it wasn't obvious before, when I see them and I see their eyes specifically, then I just know, I can tell, it's very clear. So that being said, let's go back to the more like physically embodied dragons, shall we? And what role genders play in their society? Cause it's pretty cool shit. Something really cool about this is that actually our pop culture as usual kind of reflects a lot of these these things that actual dragons um these these societies that actual dragons you know live in and these codes that they live by one specific tendency i've noticed again every dragon is different every society is different it's not all dragons have the same rules there's so many different clans different planets different dimensions and stuff it's going to be different but Something that I've really noticed is that females tend to be of higher status generally. They tend to be the leaders. It kind of mirrors like the insect kingdom in our IRL, like planet Earth, um, you know, like bees, the queen bee with all like the drones or the queen ants with all the drones. That's kind of a, a tendency I've noticed with, um, you know, queen dragon and then these like male drones. And that's also, you can see in one of my favorite series ever, 
Dragon Age by Bioware, the video game series, the lore in that series is that the high dragons, they're always female, and that the, the male dragons tend to just be called drakes. They're like drones, they can't fly. One of the reasons I've always resonated with Dragon Age is because I really resonate with that depiction of dragons. Like that's just, you know, no offense to guys or anything. It's just like, that's kind of always what I felt to be true for the majority of dragons I've connected with. Feel free to fight me on that. Another thing going off of that, um, and this can also be reflected, this is also reflected in another Bioware video game, the Mass Effect series. You got this species of alien called the Krogan, and the Krogan, the male Krogan and the female Krogan are completely separate. They have completely different societies. They just do their own thing. Um, and also, Spyro, the Spyro series, Spyro the Dragon video game series, it's the same deal. Um, you know, they separate, I believe, the females and the males. I haven't played all the Spyro games, but just going on the, the original trilogy. Um, and yeah, that's, that's what point two is, is that the males and females tend to have their separate societies. They send, tend to live like kind of segregated. Again, not always the case, but this just seems to be a tendency in the different sources I've gathered. Um, and it, it's reflected in pop culture as usual. And I just find the Spyro it thing just really geeked me out because I was just replaying the Spyro series a few years back when the Reignited game came out. And I was like, this is so weird. I never noticed before, but there's no female dragons in this world. I'm like, what the hell is up with that? And it's it's literally this. It's like real dragon shit. It's, they live in different societies. So Spyro being a male dragon, of course there aren't going to be other female dragons around. He's only going to be learning from other male dragons because that's how it rolls. Finally, there's also gender fluid societies. I believe, um, don't quote me on this, but I believe the Game of Thrones dragons might actually embody this. This is kind of like an amphibian, like reptilian sort of trait where a dragon can just literally change its physical gender to match whatever needs, the society needs. Um, and that's another common thing that I've research I guess I've learned in communicating with the dragons is there are many societies where gender means absolutely nothing because they can just change on a dime their physical composition and compensate for whatever needs the society has. So that is all I have on dragon genders. Feel free to let me know if you got any specific questions on that. And of course I would love to know what gender does your dragon guide have in your own research and connecting with the dragons? Have you learned anything specific about dragon gender roles? Have you learned anything that contrasts what I brought up today? I would love to hear about it. Um, and if you would like to learn more about working with your dragon guide, of course, you can hit me up for the Meet Your Dragon Guide service. I can connect them with your guide, get their gender, their elemental affinities, draw a sketch of them for you. And you can also check out my dragon e-course, which will teach you how to work consciously with your dragon guide and other dragons in general. If you could like this video, subscribe, hit that notification bell to be notified when I post new videos, me and the dragons will love you forever, as I always say. Until next time, friends, stay awesome and stay powerful.